If you're planning on hiking the Pacific Crest Trail northbound between March and mid-April, you're going to be hitting the San Jacinto Mountains, so here's my top five tips on how to traverse the San Jacinto Mountains. Let's go. Hello, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. Now, the San Jacinto Mountains is uh, pretty much the most treacherous part of the PCT in Southern California. You're going to be hitting some pretty deep snow, some ice, you're going to be traversing a really large and treacherous mountain range. The San Jacinto Mountains actually has 15% of the total fatalities of the entire Pacific Crest Trail, meaning that it is probably the most dangerous uh, spot of the PCT. I traversed the San Jacinto Mountains uh, in mid-March and there was plenty of snow. Uh, I got to Idlewild and then just before I decided to come home due to COVID-19 uh, I ended up traversing Fuller Ridge uh, which is quite infamous and there's a lot of obstacles in your way along the trail especially in that time of year and at that altitude you are going to hit some snow. Very unfortunately while I was traversing the San Jacinto another hiker uh, had a fatal fall. Uh, there were a number of hikers that were, ha that were having to get airlifted out. Uh, a lot of emergency calls were made even though COVID-19 was happening and there were hardly any, there was probably about 20% of the hikers on the trail and still there were a lot of issues due to the snow and ice. So I just thought I'll put this video together. I've traversed the entire range safely. I did it all on my own and uh, there's a, this, this five tips is probably the most important bit of advice that I can give you for traversing the San Jacinto Mountains. Okay, so without further ado, and after all of that, uh, let's crack on with the five tips. Okay, so tip number one, and that is to check the San Jacinto Trail Report. Um, it's on San Jack John. Com. It's all put together by San Jack John himself. I had the pleasure of meeting him in Idlewild. And what he does, he's basically a really experienced mountaineer. Um, he's hiked a lot of miles. He knows what he's talking about. And he goes up to the San Jacinto Mountains. He goes up along all the trails that uh, intersect the PCT up in the hills there. And he goes and checks all of the conditions probably four, five, maybe six days a week. And he's just always up there. And it's just such a valuable resource to know about. On the website, you've got complete write-ups of all the trail reports. Uh, he updates them at least once a week, which is really handy. There's pictures and written accounts on all of his blogs. And also, very importantly, there is a page where you can donate. The whole website is run by donations by San Jack John. Um, it's just an invaluable resource. It really helped me. It really helped a lot of other hikers. Uh, I met him, had an interview with him, asked him about the trail conditions. I just think we're incredibly lucky to have San Jack John and his website as a resource for us to check especially when you're hiking in March or mid-April. Okay so tip number two and that is to bring the right gear. I've got a selection of gear here with me that I think is really important for you if you're going to be hiking the PCT around then and especially if you've checked the San Jacinto trail report and you know that there's going to be snow uh, pick up this gear if you haven't got it already in Julian. It's probably going to be the first most likely stop that you're going to get all of this gear in one store if you haven't got it already. So uh, the first thing in my hand that I've got is these Cthulhu micro spikes. Uh, I actually bought these with me. I was advised by some friends to bring these uh, from day one and they weren't joking. From day two I had snow and ice on the trail uh, and these really helped but especially in the San Jacinto Mountains some Cthulhu micro spikes. I'll just open up the little kind of durable stuff sack that they come in and they're really they're basically like a really minimalist version of a crampon. They slip over your shoes and your trail runners uh, using these rubber kind of gaskets. And then around the bottom, they've got these really uh, tough stainless steel spikes. They're really good quality. They'll keep you firmly stuck to the ground. Uh, these are definitely not for mountaineering up super steep icy slopes. You will need boots and crampons for that, but because the PCT is so well graded, some Cthulhu micro spikes will do the job, especially if you've got the next bit of kit that I'm about to show you, and that is my Gribble Helix Ice Axe. I actually had a Corsa Camp Ice Axe, which I bought in Julian. Uh, I left this with a friend up in Washington, but if I'd had this, I'd have uh, found it a lot easier. Uh, the, camp, the Corsa Camp Ice Axe is a lot lighter, it's a lot shorter, and it didn't have a leash, so I'll just go over some little aspects of this Ice Axe now. So it's got a rubber grip on the top, so you can hold it while you're walking, and it doesn't make your hand so cold if you're not wearing gloves, and it gives you that little bit of extra grip. This is quite a long ice axe as well, so it's really good for walking, meaning that when you've got a slope on this side, you can hold the axe on the slope side, and then you can walk with it using, your, using the spike on the bottom to keep yourself nice and firm and upright on the snow. While you're wearing your micro spikes as well, this is gonna be a good coupling 
of two bits of gear that's going to keep you firm on the ground and stop you from slipping down those slopes. As I said before, it comes with an included leash, which is really handy. So if you're a beginner and you're not too used to using one of these things as you're hiking along those slopes, if you've got it leashed around your hand while you're walking, if you do end up slipping, there's no chance of you dropping the ice axe and losing it. So uh, it's a really good feature to have the leash included. The head is ultra strong and durable. Uh, it's got a serrated edge. I think this little bit here is called an adzel, and that is for cutting steps in the snow. And it's also got a spike and a spike cover attached to the leash. So it's got all the features that you need. It's not as light as the Corsa Camp Ice Axe, but it does a much better job at keeping you safe on those icy slopes. Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the ways that you can use this ice axe, but I will put some links in the description below to uh, the British Mountaineering Council. They've got plenty of videos. I'll link you to all of the videos on how to use an ice axe, how to use crampons and micro spikes in the description below. It's a much more <laughs> comprehensive viewpoint and those guys absolutely know what they're talking about. The British Mountaineering Council is one of the best resources on learning how to use um, winter gear online. Okay, so that's the ice axe and the micro spikes. The next bit of gear I think you should bring to the San Jacinto Mountains is a Garmin InReach Mini at the very least. So it's a really tiny, compact SOS beacon and GPS tracker. You can get maps on it, but I wouldn't advise using this solely for maps. But if you do get in trouble and you do slip and slide, you can smash that SOS button um, and then confirm that you need rescue. Only use the SOS button at an absolute last resort. You shouldn't be smashing that button willy-nilly. While I was in the San Jacinto, I came across a lost hiker. Um, he had slipped and he'd lost his tent poles and then he ended up clawing his way back up this slope. He slept underneath a rock uh, with no shelter. I found him and he had smashed the SOS button, but he didn't know that he had to confirm the rescue through a text message when you've linked this up to your phone or by uh, hitting the confirm button on the Garmin in Reach Mini. So Mountain Rescue didn't come after he'd smashed the button because he didn't confirm rescue. So I dialed up 911, confirmed the rescue, and um, thankfully two mountain rescue team members uh, came up and uh, helped him down to Idlewild. So uh, without this, probably would have been in a pretty bad condition. It was freezing temperatures, snowstorm, my tent was covered in ice and snow, um, just definitely not in a good way. So definitely uh, a must bring for the San Jacinto Mountains early in the year. Okay, the next item that I think you should definitely bring is a pair of super warm, really tough, really thick ski gloves. Most hikers will want to bring like a really skimpy glove that isn't waterproof. It will keep your hands warm and it will cut the wind, but it will not cut the rain. And as soon as they get wet, your hands are going to be freezing. I was really lucky. I found this pair at the 2020 Vision uh, Trail Angel stop. And I actually picked them up to see if I could find the hiker who had left them behind and give them to him further up the trail should he come back looking for him, but he didn't. But luckily for me, they proper saved my fingers. It was freezing cold up there. It was sub-zero. My fingers were so numb wearing my normal gloves. And um, yeah, these literally just made my life so much easier keeping my hands warm. I could use my map and compass. I could use my phone, my GPS unit. Everything was just so much easier with some warm gloves so just for those sections and if you're hiking in the in the sierra mountains and you haven't got some really warm gloves and the weather gets really chilly you're going to find it very difficult so yep warm gloves is a very important item okay the fifth and final item which is actually a pair of items is a map and a compass i saw so many hikers out there on the pct not carrying a map and compass yes you've got gut hook yes you've got your sos beacon and gps unit um, but if those fail and you're caught in a whiteout in those mountains and there's snow and ice, you can actually lose your way on the trail, come off trail without even realizing it up there. So yeah, map and compass, all of the gear here. Um, obviously your thermal layers and everything that you uh, would normally bring, they'll probably be enough uh, so long as you're moving. But with these items in particular, just as added extras, just for the San Jacinto Mountains, uh, I know it's a lot of weight to bring, but you will not regret it, especially if you're hiking early. Okay, my third tip is to practice with the gear. It's no good bringing all of this gear with you to traverse those mountains if you don't know how to use it. I saw a lot of hikers purchasing all of this gear, but they didn't know how to use it. So there were a lot of more experienced hikers out there, luckily, that could show everybody how to use this equipment. But for me, a resource that really helped, which I mentioned just earlier, is the British Mountaineering Council, and I will link all of the videos below. So check those out, watch those videos, and then once you've watched them, try going out in the winter on some very slight slopes, somewhere that you're gonna be safe, that you're gonna be able to practice walking with an ax, wearing the spikes, practice uh, setting a bearing on a compass, and 
checking your declination and all of that. Learn how to read a map. It's really important to have some knowledge. Lots of people think, oh, it's the PCT, it's well graded and it's just a trail. But once you get up into higher elevations and the weather changes, it's a very completely different story. Okay, so the fourth tip for hiking the San Jacinto Mountains early in the season is timing and camp. So I've written down a list of the entry points, what mileage, the exit points, and where I camped during my traverse of the San Jacinto. Uh, so hopefully this will uh, give you kind of a gauge of where I camped and what it was like. So um, after Paradise Valley at mile 151.8, uh, that's when you cross the highway and you'll go into the San Jacinto mountain range. And there'll actually be a signpost and a map of all of the mountains. And I remember there was actually some information from San Jack John asking you to check the San Jacinto trail report. So definitely do that while you're at Paradise Valley Cafe cross that highway, enter the San Jacinto Mountains, check it then. Um, but then I camped at around what, mile 155 and I planned to traverse most of the San Jacinto the following day and do something around 20 miles. So it was an all day hike around 20 miles. You're going around some really steep slopes, beautiful views. It's an absolutely fantastic section of the trail. But as soon as I encountered the snow and the ice, there were slopes that were literally like this kind of angle and the, the trail was basically cut in as like a notch which is pretty well graded. If you're lucky, there'll be footsteps still that haven't been cut with snow, kind of cutting your way through the slopes. But it was, it, they, they were steep. It was tough going. I was hiking really slowly. I probably did about 15 hours of hiking to get 20 miles that day. I got to like mile 172.2 and I tried to camp at this tent site, but it was too small, too windy. It was on the windy side of the ridge line that I was on. So I had to keep going. A further few miles I'll tell you what that was like the one of the toughest three extra miles because I was so ready to just pitch my tent before it got dark before the weather set in I knew there was going to be a storm and I got to like mile 175.4 and camped at tent site 4 and it was dark um, I had my headlamp on charge from a power bank while it was on my head and it was windy it was freezing and I was trying to pitch my tent um, it wasn't too overly exposed of a campsite and I was quite lucky that I actually didn't camp at the one before. I would have had a much rougher night's sleep. But that day, um, getting through most of the San Jacinto um, was definitely the toughest day on trail. It was the sketchiest, but I managed it. I managed to pitch a tent. I had my Catabatic Gear Sawatch, which is a really warm sleeping quilt to have. So I was quite cozy in my tent, but literally like 50 feet away, that's where I found the lost hiker and he'd been sleeping under this boulder all night without a shelter and I had absolutely no idea. Okay, so my fifth and final tip for traversing the San Jacinto Mountains early in the season is to head down to Idlewild via Saddle Junction and go down Devil's Slide. So after I uh, left the Lost Hiker with Mountain Rescue, I ended up going down the South Ridge Approach Trail down to Idlewild and that was actually a much, <laughs> a very dangerous part because I'm going in this direction and then the trail starts sloping like this and it was like, I don't know, a 50 foot slide and then a sheer drop. And I was like, no, I'm just gonna turn back. So I ended up going all the way back to where I left the trail and going down to Saddle Junction and turning left down Devil Slide. Devil Slide is a much safer route. It's just a load of really long, really gradual switchbacks all the way down to Idlewild. It takes about two hours, two and a half hours to get down to Idlewild. But yeah, that was um, a crazy section of the trail to try down that South Bridge. So definitely, um, if there's snow, uh, I wouldn't advise the South Ridge unless you're highly experienced. It was very sketchy. Go down to Saddle Junction, turn left, and go down Devil Slide. Devil Slide, it's a pretty sketchy sounding name for a trail, for an approach trail, but it wasn't actually that sketchy. It's just a really long path. So yeah, that's my fifth and final tip. So yeah, that's my top five tips. Um, campfire question, have you hiked the San Jacinto mountain range before? And if you have any tips that you would like to leave, put them in the description below. The Trail Hunter community would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subbed if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one.